Hi there, my name is Caitlin Bandy and this is my channel Bandy's Books and today we are here to do a September wrap. So September was probably the slowest month of the year for me in terms of reading and that is mainly because I was in Guatemala for half the month and the time that I was in Guatemala I was definitely not focused on reading. So I read at a pretty consistent pace for the first two weeks of the month and then for the second half of the month, I just relaxed and I finished like maybe one or two books during my vacation. In total for the month of September, I finished 11 books. Total pages was 4,078. Average pages per book was 370. And the top five genres that I read this month were dystopian, YA, sci-fi, literary fiction, historical fiction, and then fantasy was the same amount as historical. My shortest read this month was Cold Enough for Snow by Jessica Out that came in at 104 pages. And my longest read of the month was The Toll by Neil Shusterman and that came in at 625 pages. During the month of September, I was reading for three different readathons and I am happy to say that I was able to complete at least a book for each one. For Shorty September, I completed The Memory Police, Cold Enough for Snow, and The Center. For Straya September, I completed Cold Enough for Snow. And for Series September, I completed the entire arc of the Scythe series by Neil Schusterman. So now we're going to talk about how I rated each of the books that I read. Starting with the three stars, we have The Beautiful Ones by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. So this was a book of Moreno-Garcia's that I've been meaning to read for a long time. I've had a copy of it sitting on my bookshelves and I just, for whatever reason, I've never really gotten around to it. I've been more drawn to some of her other books. This one, I think by all accounts, is just a so-so book. It seems like the reviews online, aside from my own opinion, kind of reflect that as well. And for me, this was just okay. It wasn't super memorable honestly I can't even remember a vast majority of the details um, so yeah not not the best book from Reno Garcia I also rated cold enough for snow by Jessica Ao three stars this is a experimental fiction piece it is about a woman who is traveling around Japan with her mother and as she tells stories about her memories and things her reflections kind of take on an odd tinge and it becomes clear that we're not necessarily seeing things as they are. I found it a little bit confusing. I will say that the description was lovely, the writing was really lovely, and it was very like poetic and like floaty. I'm just not sure that overall the message was clear enough for me. I don't think I really got what this book was trying to say. Then we have The Center by Aisha Manazir Siddiqui. This is a dystopian fiction and I was really hyped going into it. I thought that this was okay. I I found the dystopian setup a little bit predictable and the resolution was very disappointing. As I was reading this, I also found out that there are some claims that this author blasphemed Islam. Um, I personally do not know enough about Islam to speak on this articulately, um, but there are some explanations online about some particular scenes that I guess are considered blasphemy. Um, so if you are sensitive to that particular aspect, be warned that that does exist in this book. And then I read The Library of the Dead by T.L. Huchu. This book was probably the best of the three stars for me. We have a fantasy set in Scotland. We have a character who's very curious and kind of badass. I just think that it kind of dragged in places. It could have been trimmed down. It could have been made a little bit more smooth. I have seen that the second book in this series gets much higher ratings than the first book. So perhaps I will have better luck with the second book. I am still interested in the series and I will continue on. I just wish that this had been a little bit stronger. And then our four star reads. First up, I have The Spirit Bears Its Teeth by Andrew Joseph White. This is a dystopian fic. This is a very graphic and gory. So if you're not interested in blood and violence, this is not the book for you. This book centers around a neurodivergent transgender main character. And this person is in Victorian England and is really struggling for bodily autonomy, for their rights to be respected for not being forced to be married and they are sent to a horrible institution to be basically forced into conversion therapy. Um, this book was gruesome and I have read Andrew Joseph White's previous book which I thought was also very gruesome. This one is far more gruesome than that. Um, there were so many things that happened in this book that like really affected me on a visceral level. So please, 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 if you're thinking about reading this one, take the trigger warning seriously. Violence, rape, sexual assault, um, mutilation, torture, transphobia, homophobia, conversion therapy, kidnapping, just the list goes on and they are very, very severe. It, it really impacts the plot. So you can't kind of skip over those portions. And then we had On a Night of a Thousand Stars by Andrea Yagura Clark. So this book is set in Argentina. It 
is about La Guerra Sucia or the Dirty War, which took place, I want to say, in the 1970s. This was a politically motivated genocide in which 50,000 people were disappeared by the government of Argentina. And um, I became interested in this particular subject during college when I was introduced to a book by a woman who survived this particular genocide and made it through the concentration camps and then wrote her story. Um, this is a piece of history that I found is relatively unknown in the United States and I have the feeling it's not super well known in the larger world. Uh, but it is a very important thing and women are still protesting in Argentina to find out what happened to their disappeared family members. Um, so I was super excited about this book covering that particular historical event. Were there things that I would have changed in this book? Yes. Was it the best writing ever? No. Was it a solid book with a solid plot line? Yes. And um, I give it an extra star just because, like I said, I feel like the subject matter, I was so appreciative that they covered something outside of like the typical World War II frame. Then I have The Memory Police by Yoko Agawa. So this book is very interesting. It's kind of an experimental format and I feel like it's a very polarizing read. I think you either really enjoy this one or you really don't enjoy this one. And I could see it going either way. I know that I criticized a book previously in this review for being too vague and that was cold enough for snow. This book is also very vague and the ending is not super conclusive. We never get like a really firm detail of what is going on, but I thought that this book provided a lot more food for thought. I found it really interesting how the author was playing with the idea of memory and things disappearing and um, overall I thought that this was a much more successful experimental format. Still not a perfect read for me. I wish that there was a little bit more narrative help to kind of get the overall message but I thought that this was much clearer and um, really really interesting. I read it all in one day because I just wanted to figure out what was going on. Then I had Gleanings by Neil Schusterman. This is a short story compilation that goes with the Ark of Scythe series. This is very interesting because Neil Schusterman wrote this very beloved series and then he decided to do this short story compilation. This particular book is interesting because Neil Schusterman wrote this Ark of Scythe series which is very beloved and then he decided to write this short story compilation and he invited a whole bunch of different authors to come in and write a story in his universe about one of the characters he created. I really loved it. I thought that that was a really cool aspect. It was really interesting seeing different authors playing with his particular universe. And then I also have The Toll by Neil Schusterman. This is book three in the Ark of Scythe series. I rated the other two books in this series a little bit higher. And the reason that this one was only a four star for me is that I didn't love the ending of the series. It wasn't a horrible ending and I get where Schusterman was going with it, but I just wanted a little bit more. I kind of felt like there was a little bit of a cop out where it just like resolves everything without necessarily resolving everything. There were some plot lines that I really wanted a more conclusive finish to. So it was still a good end to the series. It was still a good book, but it wasn't as highly rated for me as the first two books. And for my five star reads, I have Scythe and Thunderhead, both by Neil Schusterman. These are the first two books in the Ark of the Scythe series and I thought they were fantastic. We have a world in which people no longer die naturally. We have eradicated wars, we've eradicated diseases, we've eradicated accidents. If you are in an accident, even if you try to kill yourself, you're brought back to life with modern technology. And so to keep the world from becoming overcrowded and overpopulated, we have characters who are scythes and they are basically responsible for periodically reaping a certain quantity of people. Um, how they individually decide who they're going to kill off is very interesting and very personal to each side, um, but it's a fascinating concept. And the world that Schusterman creates is really intriguing as well. We have a world that's queued up to be a utopia and yet human greed and desire for power always inevitably gets in the way. This book series was really fascinating to me. I had heard really good things about it going into it. I had never read Schusterman before. And so I've been kind of putting this one off for a while and I don't know why I really enjoyed this. I know it's a YA dystopian series, but I thought it was really well done. I thought a lot of the themes that it covered were things that adults would relate to. And if you're into fantasy and dystopia, I think that this would be an enjoyable read for anyone in any different age group. So those are all the books that I have read in September. My average rating for the month was a 3.81. That's usually pretty typical. Usually I'm between about 3.8 up to four. My least favorite book of the month was The Center. Unfortunately, that book just didn't work for me. I thought there was a lot of promise at the beginning. The concept that they were going with was really interesting. I was super invested. 
But then like around midway, I just got lost in it. I didn't care about the characters. And then when I found out what the plot twist was, I was just like, really seriously, you couldn't have come up with anything a little bit more interesting. My favorite book of the month was Sai the Bai and Neil Schusterman. I feel like there's something special when you pick up a series and you read the first book and you're just like super, super invested in it and you know you're just gonna read all the books in the series back to back. That's how this felt. I picked it up and I was like, oh yeah, this is really good. I'm invested. I'm so glad that I have all the books available and I just banged them out one after the other. So a little bit slower month than usual, but like I said, I got to go on a vacation. So who's complaining about that? Um, I hope that you found this interesting, that maybe you got some good book recommendations for future TBRs, and that's it. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up, comment down below, and let me know what was your favorite read in September, what was your least favorite read, have you read any of the books that I talked about here, and if you're not already subscribed to this channel, you know what to do, hit the subscribe button down below, as well as the notification bell so that you never miss a video, and that way we can see each other again soon. Thanks so much for joining. Bye!